Hey guys, thank you for joining me on another video for YouTube, anatomy and physiology video. Uh, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the central nervous system and how it relates to the respiratory system. And to look at this, we're going to be looking at a pretty fascinating um, condition. Now, before I tell you about this condition, I need to tell you a short little story, a very short version of this story. This is a German legend. Now, when I think of this story, what I want you to picture is I want you to picture... Dwight from The Office, okay? Because I don't know why, but when I read this, I can't help but to think about this guy. Now, one of the things, I don't know if you ever watched The Office or not, but he's kind of famous for his really awkward and weird, dark, not humor, but personality, right? And one of the episodes, he, he has a group of kids in front of him, and he's telling them these children's stories, these old German uh, folklore, sto folklore stories that his grandmother used to tell him, right? And they're really dark and, and like these really freaky, you know, they, they have like these morals to them, but they're tied to these really strange acts uh, by these strange characters. Well, in any case, I, I kind of can't help but to think about Dwight uh, telling a story like this. So this is how the story goes, okay? So there was a water nymph named Ondine, okay? So Ondine was a water nymph. And a water nymph is basically somebody who presides in water, you know, so think like, kind of like a mermaid type deal. So Ondine lived in the water and she fell in love with a human, right? And this human proved to be unfaithful. And so Ondine's heart was, heart was broken and, and the king nymph, the king nymph found out about this and he cursed the human. And what he did is that he took his automatic physiological uh, breathing apparatus. Okay, <laughs> basically what that means is that he essentially took his ability to breathe uh, uh, subconsciously. So from th then on, this guy had to now remember to take a breath every single time. So which, so so basically what that meant is that he couldn't fall asleep now. Because if he fell asleep, then he wasn't thinking and he wasn't able to breathe. And so he would, he would suffocate and die. And that's essentially what happened to him. His, uh, the exhaustion just got to him and he ended up falling asleep and he suffocated and died in his sleep. That's a weird story, isn't it? But what's fascinating is that there's actually a condition where that actually does happen. And this is called Ondine's Curse. Okay? And this is, this is where the auto automatic respiratory function is disabled, usually from some brainstem damage or uh, traumatic damage, like a, an accident in neurosurgery. A person with Ondine's Curse, this condition, has to remember to take a breath every single time. Now, if these people do survive, and they actually are able to sleep with the aid of a respiratory machine. So, I want to take a look a little bit at the physiology, the, the physiology and the pathology that's involved in Ondine's condition. And so, what I have here, shown here, let me just back up so you can see kind of where, where I'm looking at, so just to get a perspective. And so, what I have highlighted here is the vagus nerve, okay, cranial nerve number 10, if you remember that from your um, nervous system and the cranial nerves. And just to the posterior of that, and that, that one, this one right here, this is called the phrenic nerve. So I'm gonna be highlighting the phrenic nerve and the vagus nerve. Reason being is because these are the two nerves that are, are the primary nerves that are involved in respiration. The vagus nerve number 10, actually let me, let me talk about the um, phrenic nerve first. So let's, let's look at the origins of the phrenic nerve. So let me zoom in a little bit. So the phrenic nerve, whoops, is branching out uh, your spinal nerve, your C3 spinal nerve, okay? So this is your uh, cerebral, the vertebrae, C3, and then this is your C2, okay? And this is the ramus of C3 spinal nerve, and then branching out of that is a phrenic nerve, all right? Now let's kind of zoom, but we're gonna go down to where it actually, what it's actually innervating. Now, if you pay really close attention, let me center this here. If you pay really close attention to the shape of this nerve, okay, let me remove this. Let me remove these um, ribs so you can actually get a even better view of this phrenic nerve. All right. So, uh, here it is. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. Let me zoom in. Boom, right there, the phrenic nerve. Now, if you see there, it's kind of cupping, if you will. It's kind of cupping in a in a kind of a plate shape there. Okay, and now there's another side to it. If I look over on the right side, okay, I'm not gonna remove that nerve. 
or those ribs but this is the this is the right side of the phrenic nerve so you can kind of see that it's kind of cupping there's so there's something that that belongs here let me let me go locate that so you can kind of see what it's actually innervating okay all right so keep this keep this in mind here we have our ribs we have our left lung we have our heart and the medial stinal cavity okay medial stinal meaning the medial side the the middle side okay so this is the middle cavity between the the right and the left lung and then you have the diaphragm okay so if you remember if you remember how that phrenic nerve was kind of branching out on the right side and then branching out on the left side so that phrenic nerve innervates the diaphragm so essentially what happens with the diaphragm is that it contra it's a muscle that contracts and it goes downward and as it controls downward it allows the the lungs to expand allowing air to be uh, essentially vacuumed in, pushed in uh, O2, and allowing CO2 to vacuum out. That's uh, coming from the capillaries. And so I, I go into greater detail in the previous video looking at the basic anatomy of the respiratory system, so you can take a look at that for more details on that. But like I said, the phrenic nerve helps the, um, the, the diaphragm uh, contract. Now, there, there are conditions where the phrenic nerve can be damaged and a person can experience uh, erratic hip hiccuping, okay? So that, that, cause, that means that the uh, diaphragm is contracting sporadically and causing you to hiccup. Uh, especially, this especially occurs when you lie down. So I just want to interject real quick because I don't want to leave this out. I want to just quickly discuss what a hiccup is and how the phrenic nerve, um, its innervation and its misfiring causes hiccups. So again, remember that the phrenic nerve is innervating the diaphragm on both the left and the right side so if that electrical system if you will is misfiring it's going to cause a slight contraction a sporadic contraction of the diaphragm and remember that the diaphragm will contract pulling the muscle down allowing uh creating a vacuum so that the, the lungs need to suck in air you know one of the things that you can maybe picture is picture a syringe you know when, when you grab the that little the, the, the handle where your fingers go and you kind of pull on that needle down as you pull on that needle down, that um, it, it creates a, a, a quick little vacuum inside of the syringe, causing it to suck in air quickly. And that's essentially what a hiccup is. <laughs> so you know you can just kind of imagine getting your air uh, knocked out of your lungs, or, per, or or perhaps maybe taking a gasp. <gasps> you know, being surprised or being in awe of something. <gasps> you know, and that's essentially what a hiccup does or is but a little bit more exaggerated because it's so sporadic and um and uh and it can be pretty violent sometimes too uh so in any case i just wanted to make sure and uh, throw that in there as you we as you think about what the phrenic nerve innervates and uh, causes uh, that particular action in the diaphragm and so so we have we have that in mind right so we're kind of working our way from the peripheral to the central, okay? So we're gonna be looking at the brainstem in just a few minutes. Now, what I wanna do next is I wanna take a look at the at the vagus nerve because the vagus nerve innervates, here, let me get this part of the lung out of the way. Let me hide it. Let me hide it. So the cranial nerve number 10, the vagus nerve, part of what it does is that it innervates the aortic arch, okay? So it keeps a, it keeps really close tabs on the amount of carbon dioxide that the blood has because the amount of carbon dioxide, like I mentioned in the previous video, uh, helps maintain blood pH level. So if the blood pH goes down too low, then the uh, vagus nerve is actuated and it sends a signal to the central nervous system telling it to breathe. You gotta breathe more so you can get more oxygen in so you can, you can increase the pH level to balance it out and make it more basic, okay? So let's go back and take a look at the nervous system so you can see that um, vagus nerve. Okay, so I'm actually looking at the chest chest cavity, and I want to open this up with you. Let's remove a lot of these things, a lot of these um, muscles and bones. Let's remove that. Oh, we still have a little bit more because I want you to kind of have a perspective of... Uh, here, let me remo remove the lung now. Let's hide it. All right, so let's zoom in now. So now we're going to be looking at that aortic arch that I was mentioning before, and here it is. Here's our vagus nerve, okay? Now, like I said before, the vagus nerve innervates a lot of aspects of the body, but one of them is the aortic arch. So it keeps tabs on the CO2 levels uh, of the blood. Now, now let's go 
let's go, like I said, we're going to, we move from the periphery, now we're going to the central nervous system. Okay, so here we're looking at the, at the brain here, and I want to highlight your medulla, okay, and your pons, because this is the location of the reticular formation, the nuclei, the, the control centers for the subconscious breathing, right? So you, you don't manage, you're not thinking about uh, your breathing because your body's taking care of it already. And as I mentioned before, it, it manages, manages that. Uh, let me find your, uh, hold on, it's kind of hiding back here. So this is your vagus nerve. Let me back out so you can see how long it extends. It extends all the way down to the heart. And, and again, managing the amount of CO2 that is in the blood, which controls the pH levels, which will then activate the amount of breathing you need to do. Because if, if you have too much CO2, your body will then basically tell itself that it needs to breathe more, right? You need more huffing and puffing, which is why when you exercise and you run, you're huffing and puffing. That's because your body is trying to get more oxygen to, um, to reduce the effects of all that CO2 that you've been building up. So in any case, like as I mentioned before, Odine's uh, curse has to do with the damage that's been sustained to either the pons or, or the medulla oblongata, uh, either because of a surgery mistake, trauma, or some kind of inflammation in the brain. So yeah, you know, I found this fascinating. I thought I would share it. Uh, you know, hopefully you learned something new in this video, guys, and I appreciate you watching, and I will catch you on the next one.